Well, that's the end of the lunchtime news. And now the weather from Bert Ford. Good afternoon, and not a great deal of change as regards to the weather, so most places staying dry again today. If we look at the morning chart... Time was when the BBC had the confidence to do the weather without gimmicks, or indeed graphics. Apart from the odd shower, that is, with a fair amount of sunshine. All a weatherman needed was a quiet authority and a croupier skill with those funny little felt weather symbols. But any idea of the British murmuring quietly about their favourite topic of conversation has been swept away by a new, urgent, sexy language for the weather. The latest buzzword is the weather bomb. We asked the man from the Met Office to give Newsnight a bespoke bulletin. Weather bomb, explosive cytogenesis. It all means the same thing. The word was derived way back when, in the late 70s, uh, by an American, of course. But what it refers to is a deep area of low pressure, and here it was in the middle of the Atlantic, which explodes into life at an alarming rate, 24 millibars of pressure per 24 hours. That's how quickly this thing dropped pressure through its formation. Now, this storm actually dropped its pressure by twice that much, over 50 millibars in 24 hours, so in some respects you could call it a bomb bomb. I do wonder where it's going to go. I think in the end we are going to run out of grand names and people are going to stop paying attention because they feel having a new one thrown at them every couple of weeks. As we are, actually. We've already had ex-Hurricane Bertha, ex-Hurricane Gonzalo, St Jude Storm last year, the weather bomb now. I, I think eventually people are going to stop paying attention. The waves have just taken away the groundwork, the ballast, that used to be underneath the track. Try telling that to reporters who've had to repeat the names of these exotic weather systems in the very teeth of them. Could these new terms actually do some good? Even survive. You could sort of mention weather in honour of people in the news. You know, if Wayne Rooney scored a hat-trick for England, maybe the next day it could be... The Wazza, the, the, the Wazza storm. Exactly. Yeah. What about that? Do you know what? I think you're onto something because I think the way we communicate or should communicate weather information, any kind of technical information, rather than trying to bombard them with long words, often of Latin derivation, why not get down with the kids and actually convert the weather into something meaningful, something living, breathing. And by giving things names, often people's names, it gives storms people's names, people then buy in to the sense that the weather is a living organism. They're going to become interested in it and therefore hopefully will get the information across uh, rather more effectively and people will engage with the weather story. So I think it's a good thing. And some mist and fog patches perhaps in some central districts at first tomorrow morning. You may say life was simpler when the forecast just ignored large swathes of the country. But like time and tide, meteorological hype now waits for no man. ...in the extreme northeast. And that's all.